Hello, this is Scott with EffectiveDog.com. It's Dios de la Muerte, the first day of November 1st. I'm over at Sand Creek Massacre. I'm wearing this mask not because I'm around anybody or I'm afraid of COVID, but because it's my way to honor Elliot, who I always come by. I'll always go find somewhere significant and celebrate the loss of a life or lives that just need to be celebrated. Today we're at Sand Creek Massacre in Colorado, one of the worst atrocities, one of the just worst atrocities by the government. And I'm gonna read what this says, but first I wanna say hi to Elliot. So a little story behind hanging out with him. I came here today because we always go somewhere that is culturally significant because he always helped people every way he could. He was always there for us. Us, I mean many, many people that needed his help. This area here, the American soldiers killed, slaughtered, massacred. Hundreds of Native Americans for no reason. I'm gonna read this story real quick. This is just part of the story. This isn't even all of it. This is just a small little chapter on this mile and a half trail. I still got more up there and I'm gonna go talk about those too. But here, I think this is a good turning point because it talks about the soldiers not being able to do stuff. What was happening here, how everything fell apart. And then the ladies, the women that defended everybody which is exactly what Elliot would do. That's why he's over there. Chaos, disorder, and disgust. This is what I feel. Activity in the villages. As the attack moved towards the northernmost Cheyenne and Arapaho encampments, tribal members sought to escape, even as artillery shells exploded overhead. Within the first hour of the attack, command and control of the soldiers gave way with soldiers indiscriminately attacking any Cheyenne or Arapaho they encountered. Quote, By this time there was no organization among our troops. They were a perfect mob, every man on his own hook. Unquote. By Captain Salas Sole, Captain Company D, 1st Regiment Cavalry from a letter written to Major Edward Wincoop, December 14th, 1864. Quote, The camp crier called out, Quote, wake up Arapahos, we're being attacked by soldiers. I ran outside, it was terrible. Everyone scattered all over and the big guns were firing. The camp crier was an old man. He was still announcing, scatter. We will meet again in the place where we had our last Sundance. I was terrified and then I ran and ran north. Hubert Warren Sr. relating to the story of his Arapaho grandmother singing underwater Sand Creek Massacre Project Site Location Study Volume 1. Mr. Hubert Warren Sr., Northern Arapaho. This is where we're at. Indian movements in the red. Here, there was ponies all over here, 1,800 horses, and they scattered the horses. Indian movement all through the creek beds. So we're here, when we're gonna go up a little bit further, this is all sacred. We're not allowed to go anywhere else. Not every soldier felt the same. Not all of Chivington's soldiers condoned the slaughter. Some, such as Private Isaac Clark, Company G, 1st Regiment, abhorred the senseless killing they witnessed. He and his fellow artillery crewmen became so enraged at the murder of Indians by the, quote, hundred day men of the 3rd Regiment that it was all of our officers could do to keep us from turning our artillery loose, and we would have done more to bet it would have done our best to kill every hundred day man in the bunch from the family transcription of Isaac Clark memoir Colorado College Special Collections there's a lot to that so while the natives Native Americans were peacefully running away the hundred day men which means there was these guys were significant for something the soldiers that were not part of them but with them wanted to kill every single one of them but they didn't because they're the US military and they're not allowed to do that and they would have died themselves. 100 day men, I'm looking that up. 
During this time, the Indians had been running up the creek, and the whole command moved forward and took such positions as best suited them, there, as, as there appeared to be no general organization and no one to command. Second Lieutenant Joseph A. Kramer, 1st Regiment, Testimony, March 1st, 1865, meaning this all went to court. This is all highly documented with the American military. This is documented. This is something the United States government did. This is why there's a whole trail, huh, Bell? This is why there's a massacre sign when you come up this road. This was a fucking massacre. I gotta catch my breath. Thank you, Blue. Bell, no digging, please. Incredible feats of bravery. Women at the Sand Creek during the soldiers' attack. Men in the village put up the best defense they could, but displays of bravery were not exclusive to warriors. Many women risked their lives to protect their family as well. Women either fought back with what few weapons they had, or they helped others to escape. There was, I want to say, 750 people at least here. I think over 500 were women, children, and elderly. Cheyenne and Arapaho women risked their lives to ensure the survival of others. They exposed themselves to rifle and cannon fire to guide people to safety or carry them away from danger. Without the courage of countless women placing themselves in harm's way, many more innocent Cheyenne and Arapaho may have died during the Sand Creek Massacre. Sand Creek Massacre. And where are they going to hide? You have soldiers coming up over this desolate, middle of nowhere, but it was home to so many people, travelers. This wasn't even a home. This was a lot of tribes meeting up. This was a safe place for the chiefs. There was over 33 chiefs here. When the people were running here, there was hardly any place to hide. But there was one lady who was getting children. She was getting children, but she had medicine so the soldiers couldn't see her. And she would go back and forth getting children. Letty June Shakespeare relating to the story of an Arapaho, Arapaho descendant of her mother's side of the family. Sand Creek Massacre Project Site Location Study Volume 1. It was impossible to discriminate. Nearly all the squaws fought against bravely as the men. Asshole. But at the time, I'm only saying that. The women, nearly all the women fought as bravely as the men. Because of, thank you, America being all... Sorry, rage. First Lieutenant... Samuel I. Laura, Laura, adjutant to Colonel John Chivington, 3rd Regiment Cavalry, Colorado Volunteers, Rocky National News, April 23rd, 1909. As a young Cheyenne girl, Mochi, Buffalo Calf woman, survived the Sand Creek Massacre and later rose within the Cheyenne to become a woman warrior. In 1877, she was exiled by the U.S. Army to Fort Mary on St. Augustine, Florida. Mochi was the only Cheyenne female specifically incarcerated as a prisoner in Florida. Jacksonville Historical Society. Letty June Shakespeare, a Wapaho tribe, related the story of a distant relative of her mother's side of the family who saved many children during the massacre. Account taken from the Sand Creek Massacre Site Location Study, Oral History Project, conducted 1999. Oral History Project, conducted 1999. 1864. Cheyenne Blackhead woman here, seen here in October 1933, was the daughter of Chief White Antelope, who was killed during the Sand Creek Massacre. Blackhead woman survived the massacre and lived to the age of 86 before passing on December 12, 1933. Photo courtesy of Oklahoma Historical Society. The reason why it's from the Oklahoma Historical Society because the people that were left end up going to Oklahoma, Trail of Tears, to be put on reservations going to be prisoners of war because all kinds of countless stupid fucking murderous reasons apparently alright you guys ready so actually we're not going anywhere I'm going to sit and rest I'm going to spend time with Elliot my boy alright can you see him that's Elliot you didn't get to know him Anyways, this is ScottWithEffectiveDog.com. Happy 
Day of the Dead.